Those who deny freedom to others deserve it not for themselves. Abraham Lincoln. The year is 1857. People are working their jobs, minding their own business for the most part, until they hear the verdict has been released for one of the largest court cases in United States history. On March 6, 1857, the Dred Scott case was decided regarding slavery and freedom, creating absolute havoc across the country. After fighting for his freedom for over a decade, enslaved African American Dred Scott was denied his freedom despite what the Constitution and Missouri Compromise said about slavery. The country finally had clarity on where the government stood on the issue of slavery and what their future as a union was going to look like going forward. The decision of the Dred Scott case showed where America stood on the issue of slavery, proved the Missouri Compromise was unconstitutional, and further divided the country, eventually leading to the Civil War. Dred Scott was an African American born into slavery in 1799 in Southampton, Virginia. Owned by a landowner and farmer from Virginia named Peter Blow, Dred Scott spent most of his early life working either in Virginia or in Alabama where the Blow family lived. After 12 years, Dred Scott and his owners moved to St. Louis, Missouri where he was sold to an army surgeon named Dr. John Emerson after the death of Peter Blow. They lived in Missouri until 1836 when Emerson took Scott to Illinois, a free state, in Fort Snelling in what is now Minnesota and back then Wisconsin Territory. According to the Missouri Compromise, slavery was forbidden in these territories, and slaves could sue for their freedom if they were being held un captive unconstitutionally. While still on the free territory, Scott married a woman who was also a slave of Emerson's. Emerson died in 1843, and his widow, Eliza Sanford Emerson, inherited the Scots. Seeing this as his opportunity, Dred Scott filed a lawsuit suing for his freedom. In 1846, he was granted his freedom for two years. Meanwhile, Emerson's widow turned the administration of her affairs to her brother, John F.A. Sanford, who appealed the case that gave Scott his freedom. The Supreme Court of Missouri ruled that upon Scott's return to territory where slavery was legal, the status of slavery would be reattached to him and he had no case before the court. In 1855, a decade after Scott first requested for his freedom, the case reached the U.S. Supreme Court. Scott claimed that he and his wife should be granted their freedom because they had lived in Illinois and the Wisconsin Territory for four years where slavery was illegal. The laws of these two territories said that slaveholders gave up their rights to slaves if they stayed for an extended period. In 1857, the U.S. Supreme Court gave its ruling, saying that Congress did not have the power to prohibit slavery in the territories. This established that the Missouri Compromise was unconstitutional and that when the Constitution was adopted, it granted citizenship to every class and description of persons who were recognized as citizens. This class did not include descendants of African Americans, whether they be free or enslaved. Therefore, Dred Scott and his wife were not considered citizens and had no right to sue in federal court. Up until the verdict was released for the Scott v. Sanford case, slavery was an extremely disputed topic in the United States. The Missouri Compromise balanced the country between free and slave states, giving clarity as to where slavery was legal and illegal, but not giving insight to the extent of which it could be taken. When the verdict was released, it was clear where the government stood on the matter. Roger B. Taney, the Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, claimed that African Americans were never intended to be included under the word citizen, but there is no mention of this in the Constitution. He says, we think people of African ancestry are not included or were not intended to be included under the word citizens in the Constitution and can therefore claim none of the rights and privileges which that in instrument provides for and secures to citizens of the United States. Contradicting to this statement, the Constitution says, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the, their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The Constitution clearly states that all men are created equal and have natural rights. Under the Constitution, Dred Scott was a man and should have been allowed to sue for his freedom. Roger B. Taney's ability to overrule what the Constitution stated on the freedom of men made it clear to Americans that the legal system had intentions of always keeping humans in bondage. Additionally, Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, Roger B. Taney, declared that the Missouri Compromise was unconstitutional and Congress did not have the authority to prohibit slavery in these territories. A joint committee and assembly of New York was appointed to report and consider the whole case in itself. They said, There was only one question before the court for adjudication, and that was whether Dred Scott was a citizen of the United States. No judge of the court had a right, and far less was his duty, 
to discuss, decide, or even express an opinion on any other question or subject. Roger B. Taney, however, did exactly this. He declared that the act of Congress to admit the state of Missouri into the Union, known as the Missouri Compromise, was unconstitutional and void. He also stated that Congress only has the power to make rules and regulations regarding territory and other property that belonged to the United States when the Constitution was first adopted. Americans saw this as an absolute blow to the Missouri Compromise and power of Congress. A Democratic newspaper even greeted the decision of the case with applause and said, The verdict in this case was a strong blow at the evils of the Missouri Compromise and a victory for the people of the South. From this point going forward, the Missouri Compromise was no longer valid for the people in America. Most evidently, the Dred Scott case further divided the country between North and South, paving the way to the Civil War. The North and South were already very much divided politically and economically before the case, and the verdict just intensified this division. The U.S. Supreme Court's ruling in 1857 made many Northerners angry and convinced them that the South would do anything to protect slavery. On the other hand, pro-slavery Southerners interpreted the ruling as legal confirmation that slavery was allowed to spread. They were ecstatic about the outcome and were led to believe that the abolitionist campaign to aid Scott, which were mostly Northerners, were enemies of a greater union. The decision of the case inflamed the passions on both sides, causing both the North and South to act out on behalf of their political views. Northerners were fearful that slavery was going to become legal across the country, so in response, abolitionists like Abraham Lincoln, who were disgusted by the outcome of the case, publicly spoke up. Lincoln said, Whenever I hear anyone arguing for slavery, I feel a strong impulse to see it tried on him personally. Articles were also published in northern periodicals stating that the Supreme Court's decision was a result of political corruption. In contradiction, the South published articles stating that the decision of the Supreme Court was a glorious one. The front page of the Daily Morning News of Savannah, Georgia read, The series of decisions of the Supreme Court of the United States in the Dred Scott case is of more vital importance in reference to the settlement of the slavery question than any or all the other acts and proceedings upon this subject, legislative and judicial, state or federal sense, the organization of the federal government. The case made it clear that there would still be no solution to the issue of slavery and nothing would be solved unless a war was declared between the North and the South. Extreme abolitionist John Brown said in a note, I, John Brown, am now quite certain that the crimes of this guilty land will never be purged away but with blood, and just a short year later, the Civil War began. Dred Scott didn't live long after his case was dismissed. His freedom was bought out 11 years later by his friends who supported his case, but he died very shortly after this. His case was one of the first to appear in the Supreme Court, involving an African American, and was a huge step backwards for slaves at first. Eventually, though, his case would prove to be a huge step forward to deciding the fate of slavery as we know it today. The verdict of his case capitalized on the issues of slavery and led to the Civil War. A war began as a result of the long-standing controversy over the enslavement of black people. After four years, the war was ended and the 13th Amendment to the Constitution was passed, banning slavery. Dred Scott's impact on our country is still one of the strongest ones seen in our, in our country's history, and his bravery and activism lives on today.